money. There are only two ways to make money, right? Doctor or engineer? Wrong. Our parents make us believe that it's difficult to make money unless you do what everybody else is doing. Well, send this video to your parents because I found three people that are making money, lots of money, in the most unique way possible in the world. And trust me, some of them will blow your mind away. In New York, there is a guy who makes thousands of dollars a month just by standing in line. I kid you not, he is a professional line sitter. If we have to wait in line to get it, we'll do it. That's our slogan, we wait for your want. And for the first time ever, I wanna show you how his business works. In New York, I introduce you to Robert. Hey Nas Daily, I'm Robert Samuel and I wait in lines for a living. Eight years ago, Robert was unemployed and really needed some money. But one day, he saw something weird. He saw rich people waiting in line on the street outside of an Apple store, waiting to get the newest iPhone. So Robert saw an opportunity. He offered one guy to stand in line for him for $350. And the rich guy said yes. The first product we stood in line for was the iPhone 5 back in 2012. This was the easiest money Robert has ever made in his life. So the next day, he did the same thing. Once I waited in line for someone else's phone and made enough to buy my own phone, I figured it had potential to earn money. So he figured, why stop there? Why not make it a full-time job and start a real business out of sitting in line? If we have to wait in line to get it, we'll do it. That's our slogan, we wait for your want. Turns out that for a lot of items that we like, like iPhones, Star Wars tickets, PS5, if you want to be one of the first to get them, you have to stand in line for tens of hours, if not days. Just take a look, that's crazy. People even bring their tents to camp and sleep on the street. People wait in line for the iPhone for so long because it's like fear of missing out, FOMO. They gotta have the latest and the greatest and they wanna have bragging rights. To save people time and money, Robert hired his friends and started a company called Same All Line Dudes, where people wait in line for them as a service. We advertise our business three ways mostly, by giving our business cards to people in lines with us, by using a banner on the sidewalk, and even once we leave, we do chalk advertisements so people can see that they don't have to wait next time they're in line. Getting a line sitter will cost you about 20 bucks an hour. And of course, if it rains or snows, or if it's super far, you'll have to pay extra. The longest we waited in line actually was four days for Hamilton Broadway tickets. We even had people swapping out and switching shifts. To Robert's surprise, everybody wanted to use his service. And not just for iPhones. They also use it for shoes, cakes, restaurants, and even government applications. The best thing about this job is that everyone can wait in line, even grandmas. As long as you can stand, you can be hired. We have all kinds of people that work for our company, from stay-at-home moms, to college students, to seniors, to veterans. It really runs the gamut. I am convinced there is no such thing as a bad business idea. You can build a business even from waiting in line. This man can solve a Rubik's cube, but he can also make art with hundreds of Rubik's cube. He can paint masterpieces. We've all seen this stuff on the internet, but for the first time ever, I want to take you behind the scenes. How does he do it? Why does he do it? And how much work? And how many hours does it take to make this? Hint, a lot. 
In Pizarro, Italy, I found Giovanni. Hi, nice daily. My name is Giovanni, and I'm a full-time Rubik's Cube artist. When he was 15, Giovanni was just an ordinary student. When one day, a friend showed him this. My story starts uh, in 2009, when I first uh, learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Uh, a friend of mine brought it at school and showed me how to do it. And since then, I fell in love with the cube. So Giovanni fell in love with this puzzle and he decided to solve it really fast. Like, really, really fast. I can solve a Rubik's Cube in under 10 seconds. 10 seconds, no way, show us. Go. That is crazy. But then he got bored once you can solve it under 10 seconds, it takes many, many months to gain just a few milliseconds. And after a while, it can be a little bit boring. So I decided to do something special. Instead. So instead of solving one Rubik's Cube where all the sides look the same, he decided to mix hundreds of cubes up until they connect and become art like this and this. It is much harder than it looks. One funny thing that most people don't know is that once it is glued and framed, it's actually very, very heavy. Each portrait costs hundreds of Rubik's Cubes and thousands of dollars. One bad cube can ruin an entire picture. And making these portraits can cost a lot of time. Giovanni needs at least 12 days to make them. He first draws the portrait on his computer. He twists all the Rubik's Cubes to recreate the portrait and finally puts them on a huge frame. Sometimes his portraits even need more than 6,000 cubes. This is my portrait of Audrey Hepburn. It took me from design to mosaic around 12 days to make it and it's made using 725 Rubik's Cubes. Soon enough, pictures of his work went on social media and instantly became a hit. And many celebrities wanted to get their portraits done by him. I could never imagine that I could make a living selling my Rubik's Cube art. His art got so famous that people like Will Smith and The Rock started reposting his work. And today, getting your portrait from Giovanni can cost you thousands of dollars. This master of Rubik's Cubes can solve not just one cube, but thousands of them at a time. And that's why he is the master of his craft. This guy is jumping up and down, not in a playground, but in a kitchen. And he's not playing. He is making noodles. Yes, these noodles. Who is he and why is he using his butt to make noodles? And how does noodle made from a butt taste like? In the city of Hong Kong, the kingdom of food, I found Marco. Hello, next daily. I'm Marco. I'm a The tradition of bouncing noodles actually came from Marco's family's homeland in China. So his family took the recipe and moved to Hong Kong, where for generations they have been making noodles unlike any other place on earth. First, they go to this tiny room and take a thick slab of dough. Then they take a huge bamboo stick, attach the stick on top, hop on it, and start bouncing again and again, up and down, left and right, for hours and hours until the dough is super strong and super flat. Why? They do this process for every noodle that they serve. And out of the bouncing noodles, they can make meals like this, and this, and this. 
咁呢一個捉星做面嘅方法咧，其實都日復日，比較反覆啦，同埋、呃、比較悶嘅。咁所以喺出面好多面鋪咧，都取而代之，淨係用機器咧，就取代咗呢個步驟就算噶啦。It might look fun, but in fact, sitting on this heavy bamboo pole for hours is super hard, harder than going to the gym. 咁其實呢一個做面嘅方法咧，每一次咧都令到我好攰嘅呢個足星按面呢個步驟，大概好似跑完馬拉松咁樣啦。咁另外都如果即係按耐咗咧，都會令到 pat pat 會螺旋嘅其實。Until then, you will find Marco here in his little shop in Hong Kong, bouncing away to make noodles. In fact, bouncing noodles is a dying art. Hardly anyone does it anymore because of how tough it is. But at the end of the day, Marco believes it's all worth it, and so do his dozens of customers. Chefs like Marco stick to the traditional way of making food, not for money or fame, but simply for passion.